So in this video, we're going to use AG Grid with React. And we're going to create a very small project with a component that wraps AG Grid just to show how it gets started. Now, the first thing I'm going to do, because we're starting from scratch, is I'm going to npx and create a React app. And I will call this getting started with AG Grid hooks. Big name. Now this will take a little while to get everything going. So I will fast forward. Okay, let me go into that directory and add it to my Visual Studio code in the workspace. There we go. Now let's install AG Grid and the React GUI. Again, that will take a little bit of time, so fast forward. And when this is done, I will just start up the project in its default installation and we'll amend it from there. So let's start the development server. And we're good to go. So in my project, in my app.js, I don't need all this boilerplate. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to replace this div with the cars grid that we are about to create, which is going to be a small wrapper around AG grid to render a grid that with some cars data. And I'll import that from the cars grid, which we haven't created yet, but let's do that now. So cars grid.js. So let's start with the imports that we need. We need react. And I'm going to be using state. I want to import all that from react. I'll also need some ag grid. So let's add the grid column and ag grid react, which is the react GUI. Now I'm using the basic examples from our website. So if you later on look through the getting started guide on our website, then you'll see all the CSS files and import instructions. I'm just going through this quickly. So here's a sneak peek of the documentation and the documentation goes into this in more detail and explains how to use some of the enterprise features but we're doing a cut down version in this getting started just to walk through the basic steps. So I've imported React. I've imported the AG grid components that we're going to use, and I've added some CSS to make it all look nicer. So what I need to do is I'm going to render a grid. So let's add the function that will act as our cars grid. And let's make it return nothing except a div just to render something on the screen. Okay. So now we can get started. We've got a blank screen. We're ready to go. So what do I want in this div? Well, I need to add an AG grid react component, and we will then customize this. So I'll need to, first of all, style it and I'll use the AG theme Alpine that we imported and I'll control the size just using some inline CSS to start with. So we want a height of 400 and a width of 600. Now we have our most basic grid and it's empty because we haven't given it any data. So let's do that. Now, rather than make you watch me type in some data in a constant in an array, I'm just going to copy and paste this in so that I have my initial row data. Now I will want to render this from state. So I will say const row data, and we will have the ability to set the row data. And this is going to use the state hook to initially set it from the initial row data that I just typed in. And in order to 
render this, the grid has to know what data to use. So we will say, grid, I want you to use the raw data, which is contained in the state. Now at this point, we can see that the grid is no longer trying to load something because we've given it data. What we haven't done is tell it how to render it. So to do that, I'm just going to define the columns. So let's define a column for the field, which is the make. And we should now see the make data in there. And if I repeat that for the other two columns, which would be the model and the price, then we should see our data in the grid. So we've created the most basic grid we could imagine. And we've done it through declarative definition of the columns and the row data coming in from a constant. We're going to change that over the course of this tutorial. But for now, we have essentially a table of data. So to make it a data grid, I want to add some in-cell editing, some sorting, filtering and pagination. So let's start with the in-cell editing. Now, because it's in-cell editing, I'm going to define this price column as editable. Now, when this re-renders, I have the ability to edit the data in here. So no real code change required, just a property in here. And similarly, to make it sortable, make the make sortable. Let's do sortable equals true. Now we should see that the make column has the ability to sort. Neither of the other ones do because we haven't configured them. So we're getting a lot of functionality out of the box with AG Grid just by setting some attributes here. I can make the model filterable. Let's see, you can filter this. True. So now my model will have the ability for me to filter. Out the box, no coding required. Now, ideally, I would like to make the make and the model and the price sortable and filterable. I don't really want to keep adding attributes in here. So what I'm gonna do is tell the grid to have a default column definition. So default call def equals, and then it's going to be sortable and it's going to allow a filter. And if I remove the sortable true, filter true, then because we have a default, all our columns now inherit that default and they're all sortable and filterable but only the price is editable because we've configured that on the column itself. Now, I think my grids are going to have quite a lot of data, so let's add some pagination. We do this at the grid level, so I just tell the grid pagination is set to true. So when it refreshes, we now have pagination. Now, in order to take advantage of this, we better load in some data. So let's do that. So we want to use an effect. So I'm going to fetch from one of our standard test data URLs that you see in many of our examples. Then when we've loaded that data, I want to take the result and I really want that result as JSON so that the grid can then use that as its raw data and we will set the row data from the state so that the grid automatically loads it up. And there we go. So now we have quite a lot of data and the pagination takes effect, which makes more sense as to why you might want to add a filter. And all of this is out the box. Now, because we're using React, we have to be mindful to make sure that we only load in the data when the component is mounted and the other thing we might want to do is to get rid of the column declarations to make them easier to maintain and put them in an object. But I'm going to do that in the next video when we cover optimization. But before we go on, let me quickly show you this feature that you get with AG Grid, which is the loading screen. So if I remove the data there, make the data unassigned, when I refresh, you can, if you blink or don't blink, you can see the loading logo come up there because we're loading it in and we get that functionality to tell the user that data is loading into the grid in the background for free. And we do that by setting the state 
to unassigned. And in the next video, we'll use objects to define the columns, to see what impact that has, and then consider some other ways of optimizing our components that are using AGGrid.